Now, we'll move on to the last major type of stress, which is the bearing stress. Now, if two bodies are pressed against each other, compressive forces are developed on the area of contact. This is why we call it contact pressure. Uh, by the way, if you hear the word pressure, it's just the same with stress. However, bearing stress differs from compressive stress because it is an internal stress caused solely by compressive forces. Now, the bearing stress is denoted by sigma b, which is equal to the bearing force divided by the bearing area. This is essentially just force over area, but we are adding the subscript b to signify bearing. And so now, let's go to the basic definition of bearing stress. Let's say we have two bodies in contact with each other. Now, if this top cube is placed against the bottom cube, there will be an internal stress at the junction point of these two objects, which is right here. And so if we isolate the top cube and project lines over the edges, which are right here, the area enclosed by those points is the bearing area, because that's the area in contact with another body. Now usually in strength of materials, we are interested in the bearing stress in bolt connections, which usually look like this. And so as an illustration of bearing stress in these connections, consider the lap joint formed by the two plates that are riveted together as shown. Now this is our rivet, and it connects the two plates. Now notice here that this bolt is in contact with the plates, because this is placed against the plate. And so if we'll apply the force P, this bolt will develop an internal stress due to the contact pressure. Now if you think of it conceptually, the bearing stress caused by the rivet is not constant. It actually varies from zero at the sides of the hole, which are right here, to a maximum behind the rivet. Uh, by the way, this is still the top view of our system, and so I will just show you later how the bearing stress is not constant. Now let's look at our plate from the side. We'll have this figure. Now let's just remove our bolt heads so that we can make sense of the bearing area. Now, in the isometric view of our connection, we'll be able to better understand how we can project an area. And so we have this one. But in order to draw the free body diagram, let's actually isolate one plate. And so let's move this out of the way, and we'll try to analyze only the top part. And so we have this. Now this is our free body diagram. We have our applied force right here. And then to maintain equilibrium, there will be a resisting force which is our bearing force. Now from this FBD, we see that the bearing force PB is just equal to the applied load. Now, the bearing stress caused by the rivet is not constant. It varies from zero at the size of the hole to a maximum behind the rivet. As shown right here, again, it varies from zero at the sides. And then here, behind the rivet, is our maximum bearing stress. However, the difficulty inherent in such a complicated stress distribution is avoided by the common practice of assuming that the bearing stress sigma b is uniformly distributed over a reduced area. And so let's actually transmit this to the side of the plate. Now the reduced area here that we'll consider is the projected area of the rivet. Now let's draw a line from the sides of the bolt which are right here. And then let's draw two vertical lines right here which are parallel to the height of the bolt. And so we have this. Now this green area is the projected area of the rivet, where this dimension is the thickness of the plate, and then this dimension is just the diameter of the rivet, which is this one. And so what we are assuming here is that the bearing force acts over this area, and so this will be the area that we'll take into account. Now to better understand this area, let's actually make a cut right here. And then let's isolate that section. And so we'll have this figure. Again, this is our diameter, and this is our thickness. And then we'll just actually consider the pink area. And so now, let's go back to this figure. Now, if the diameter of the rivet that joins the plates is 20 mm, and the working stresses are 120 MPa for bearing in the plate and 60 MPa for shear in the rivet, let's determine the minimum safe thickness of each plate. Now in this problem, we have two considerations. We have bearing and we also have shearing. And so let's try to separate our calculations for the two. First, we have our consideration for bearing. Now the bearing stress of the plate is limited to 120 MPa. And so we know that stress is just equal to force over area. However, our area here will be the diameter times the thickness of the plate. And so 120 MPa is equal to the applied force divided by the bearing area, which is the diameter of the rivet multiplied by the thickness. And so this is D times T. However, we know that D is equal to 20 mm. And so this is 20 mm. Now notice here that we have two unknowns. 
and so we will need two equations. Now our second equation will come from our consideration for shear. Now the shear in the rivet is limited to 60 MPa and so for shear we have tau is equal to the shear force divided by our area for shear which is AV. Now recall that for shear stress we will actually consider the parallel area. Now if you look at our force P it's parallel to this area which is this one. And then this is just simply the cross section of the bolt. By the way, let's just label our figure. This is our diameter and also this one. And then this is our thickness. And so again, for shear, its limitation is 60 MPa. And so 60 MPa will be the shear force which is just equal to P divided by the area which is pi over 4 times 20 mm squared. Now by the way, our bearing force is just equal to P because we only have one bearing area. However, if let's say you have two bolts, then you will have two bearing areas. Likewise, if you have two bolts for shear, then our area for shear will also be doubled. That's what you have to remember. And so using our calculators, we can solve P if we are considering the limitation for shear. And so that'll be 60 times pi over 4 times 20 squared. And so that's equal to 18849.55 newtons. And so since we already have P, we can now substitute that here. And so this will be 18849.55. And then let's solve the thickness. Now that'll be, let's just store this into A. We have 120 is equal to 18849.55 divided by 20 times the thickness. And so our thickness will be 7.85 millimeters. And so this will be the minimum safe thickness of our plate. Now, in reinforced concrete design, bearing stress in footings refers to the stress applied to the soil underneath a footing or foundation. Now, when a structure is built, its weight is transmitted through the footings to the soil below. And then our bearing stress here is the force per unit area exerted by the footing on the soil. And then this contact area can vary depending on the shape and size of the footing. Because in some cases, we can have circular footings, combined footings, rectangular footings, square footings, or the like. There are actually a lot of cases. And so let's say we have this footing, and then we have a downward concentrated load P, which is applied at the column. Now this load just comes from the loads transmitted to the column from our beams and girders, because essentially, our girders are supported by columns. And then our columns are supported by the footing. But then, what supports the footing? It's actually the soil below. And so if we are to draw our FBD, the soil will have a resultant distributed reaction right here. However, we have to note here that this is a bearing stress. And so this is actually applied over the area. As such, if you look at our figure in 3D, we'll be able to see the reaction of the soil, which will look like this. And then our projected contact area, which is this one, is basically the area of the footing. And so this is the summary of all the things you should know related to bearing stress. In our next videos, I will provide more example problems so that you will be able to apply the concepts in more advanced subjects. Now just an additional input, when our column loads are very large, it will have the tendency to punch the footing. And so in your future subjects, you will be able to know that this is subjected to punching shear. But since we are still in mechanics, we will not be dealing with those. But this is just an orientation. And so I hope in your future subjects, you will be able to apply the concepts that we have learned here because our subjects in civil engineering are actually interconnected and then strength of materials is an important foundational subject.